Patrick, uh, David pointed out to me that you know, shooting a narrative film is, you know, when you do it, you, you want everything to be correct when the camera's rolling. Whereas with documentaries, I think you're almost hoping that something goes wrong so you can catch it <laughs> on camera. And he brought that up to me the other day. So how is it for you when, you know, it, it's difficult when things aren't going well with narrative films, but for you with um, documentaries, you're looking for those little idiosyncrasies mm -hmm. in someone's speech or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you plan that, or, or or how do you be that fly on the wall? Yeah, um, you definitely want as much conflict as possible to come up when you're shooting a documentary. Um, but of course, that just simply can't be predicted or planned ever. You try and you try and focus in on subjects for films that are sort of that sort of have conflict inherent in them somehow like in pursuit of silence you know uh, I wanted to document it on silence and the natural counterpart to that was noise and so I sort of had this built-in kind of protagonist antagonist kind of relationship just right there um, but yeah you can't really plan for that kind of thing you for doc with documentaries you kind of have to just be rolling all the time you know and and um, be paying very close attention to what's happening uh, in front of the camera, you know. Um, and you become very intimate with your subject to where you kind of start um, getting a sixth sense about what he's thinking or he or she is thinking and feeling and where the story might go and you just kind of have to hope that you have the intuitive sense to put the camera in the right place when things do turn, you know, a certain way, you know. Um, but it's a lot of just following your gut and having your camera roll a lot, <laughs> pretty much the whole time, yeah. I think I read where you wrote that sometimes you almost want to have no relationship sometime when you're behind the camera because you almost want them to not think of you as someone to impress or whatever it is so they mm -hmm. might change themselves. Totally, yeah. So you walk in, I mean, I'm sorry if I'm putting words in your but was that something you had said? Did yeah, you yeah, I, I remember, I think I wrote that in the article. Um, right. Yeah, I, we had an especially challenging time uh, with Joe Sui, a main character in my last two films, basically, um, The Philosopher Kings and then Lasus. And he just, we just knew each other so well, like, and he was so comfortable and accustomed to having a camera in his face that it was like us just hanging out in a room together every time I, I was rolling. And so he would often just kind of look at me and talk to me and tell me about his day, for example, and I'd have to remind him, like, I'm just shooting B-roll right now, you kind of have to pretend I'm not here, and so... You know, once you get to know someone too well, it just becomes really hard to be a fly on the wall, you know? Um, it helps that I think I'm not a very intimidating kind of person, you know? And, and so, uh, and <laughs> maybe pe people easily kind of drown me out and kind of uh, consider me part of the background. Uh, but that's helped, uh, that's helped with the documentary filmmaking. It's, um, they just kind of tend to drown, you know, tend not to notice me after a while. And, you know, I try and stay as quiet as possible. I try not to interact with them. At least when I'm shooting B-roll and when I need them to be silent. Um, yeah, just kind of keep the interaction to a minimum. Well, I've noticed for us that a lot of times we come in and people are in pitch mode. The yeah. first time you turn on the camera, yeah. they have, they're in actor mode or whatever. And then when you come back the second time, I think you really get a better sense of who they are. Yeah. Are there tricks that you use? Because so sometimes then you'll come back and you'll go, oh, I don't think today's the day. You could just see right. something's happened. Yeah. Do you do things to... You know, I find that the... I think the key to getting those intimate moments from your subjects is time. Like, you really have to invest the proper amount of time. You can't go in thinking you're going to get the right B-roll in the right moments within an hour's time. You know, you, kinda, you have to be prepared to hang out with the guy uh, all day long. Um, and... And, and maybe you'll capture a moment or two in a span of eight, an eight to ten hour sort of shoot, you know? Um, and I think over time they become accustomed to you just kind of being around and being in the background and their guard kind of goes down and that sort of salesman within them just kind of naturally disappears and they become, you know, you can only sort of put your guard up for, for only so long, you know? Um, so time, I think, is the main thing, is just investing the proper time, staying as silent as possible, minimizing your interaction. Um, and, you know, it helps if they like you, you know, uh, and respect what you're doing, respect who you are. That all helps quite a bit. You know, if they feel like you're a threat, obviously they're going to feel intimidated and it's going to become a problem. But, yeah, putting them at ease, um, being very friendly and, and complimentary and befriending them in a very genuine way, you know, making them feel like you're sort of collaborating on a project together um, definitely helps the situation, the dynamic.